Hello and welcome. I'm Vicky and I'm going to show you seven different ways that you can color your dried flowers at home. I'll also talk about the way I dry my flowers as we go through this tutorial. So gather up your supplies and get ready to have some fun. So I've piled out all the things on my desk that I'm going to be using in this tutorial. You don't need all of these supplies. You may find that one of these methods works beautifully for you and stick with that one. I have everything from acrylic paints to fabric colored paints to paint pens. And what you will need will be a way of applying them. So I have a sea sponge, some very big brushes and smaller brushes. They're just inexpensive brushes from Kmart and the dollar store. And you'll need some clear water for mixing. Now here are the flowers that I'm going to be colouring. You can see there's a red flower in there already. I don't know why, but this flower remained red. There maybe was something that the florist had used to preserve it before I bought that flower, but the rest of them are very brown and very dull. So I'm going to change that right now and bring some life back to these dried flowers. Now to prep your flower, the first thing you're going to need to do is to remove some of the leaves or at least to pull them away from the main flower so that you can actually reach it to paint it. So the first method I'm going to use is acrylic paints. Choose some colours. I'm choosing colours that are more natural. So reds, ochres, yellows, oranges will be, and pinks will be the colours of my blooms. And then I'm going to add some green to some of the stems or the understory. So I'm mixing up with a very thick brush to begin. You can see how quickly the colour goes on with a big thick brush like this. This is a gesso brush and it's from Mon Mart. It came in a pack of three. So you can see I'm kind of stippling to get the colour in through the top of the petals there. And already it's a lovely vibrant red compared to the dull brown. So the acrylic paint is quite thick and I'm going to add another colour in. This is like a buff colour so that I'm going to get a two-tone pink on this flower. And the acrylic paints I'm using are various brands that I've picked up mainly from the dollar store. Some are from Reeves, which are more an artist grade, but mainly they're dollar store acrylic paints. So I may take off some of these leaves later. It has a lot of leaves on the stem. I'm going to just cut off the broken pieces with some scissors and I'll leave it till I put the final arrangement together to decide whether I'll take off all of these leaves. I quite like them. They're like a zigzag, but they are very dry, so I may remove some later. So there's our first method. Now these flowers here are both the same variety and I really don't know the name of these varieties. You might be able to leave it in the comments and tell me what they are. But what you need to do really is to either pull these outer leaves down away from your bloom or just cut them off. It's really up to you what you do there. And sometimes if you pull at them, they'll fall off anyway. So this is another method. This is using some Posca paint pens. So this color is fuchsia and I'm going to just scribble on the paint pens and it looks very rough and ready to begin with, but I'm going to smooth it out with some water once I've finished dabbing on all the petals. This is a pretty fast method. And you can see how you can get quite intricate parts of the flower. So you can push right down into the edges of it with this. It's a nice easy method and I have an olive green here too. If you want to see what the names are on these, it's on the barrel. So now I'm going to add this olive green and this will be a two-tone flower. 
with the olive green base and the red petals and it's looking very scratchy at the moment very stripy but you'll see when I add the water it all comes together So just bringing in my paintbrush. This paintbrush came from Kmart. It's just a long round brush. It's very handy for a lot of things. And you can see as I add the water, that streakiness disappears and it smooths out the colour. And then I'm bringing that fuchsia back in again, just for the very top of the flower. Adding the water and it's done. So pretty. And here's the before and the after. Now the next method, method three, is spraying your flowers. So I'm first of all going to pull off some of these dead leaves, cut some and pull some off. If you look at the shape of this, it has a really nice cone in the centre of the flowers, but all these dead leaves just look rather sad. So I'm going to take most of the leaves off and just leave the crown of leaves around the cone and you can strip these off with your fingers or with scissors and by the time I've stripped all those leaves you can see the cones are really standing out. Now I have this splat box that I've created as a little bit of a spray booth so I can use it on my desk and I'm going to use some dilution spray paint. This is pure sunshine and the bottle actually got clogged up, so I'm pouring it into a little water bottle. Um, it wasn't spraying, so if that happens to you, just decant it into one of these inexpensive little spray bottles from Kmart. There's a little ball bearing in them as well, a little metal ball, so make sure you put that in as well. That helps distribute the paint mixture in the bottle. Now this is lovely. It's a gold colour, but it's a really browny gold. It's not sort of a cheesy gold. <laughs> so it's looked really nice in the end and I really loved how this turned out. So that's how it is. I'm going to put that outside to dry and get on with the next one. So this method is using big brush markers by Faber-Castell. These are pit pens and they have a lovely wide brush on them. And they're a paint pen and you can scribble with these. So I'm just doing a scribble all over these gorgeous little gum nuts and shake out what's inside of them because they do have some of the seeds still left. And I can see there's a critter has <laughs> made a hole there. So I'm going to dig that out. I don't want that crawling out on my dinner table when I put these flowers in the center just scribbling away with this lovely olive green colour. It's a really subtle colour, but it's just bringing back a little bit of life to the gum nuts. The other thing too, it's important to do the underside. So I'm working from the very top of the gum nuts and then turning it around and getting the underside. And just scribble. And it looks really effective. It looks like something that's quite natural. So there's your big brush markers from Faber-Castell. And I'm going to use my scissors and cut off any parts that have died already. Just those little bits of the dead stem. Now the method number five is to use fabric paint. Now these were very inexpensive. I found these in my local dollar store and I'm just using reds, yellows, oranges and greens. I won't need the other colours. And I'm going to do a bit of colour mixing with these fabric paints. These are the sort of paints that you can use on t-shirts or on sneakers or whatever. This flower here dried really well. It has a nice lime colour to the leaves. So I think I'm going to do like an orangey bloom. And to create that, I'm going to do a bit of colour mixing. Now when you buy these paints you need to stab them with the underside of the lid to get them open 
So I've got some various reds, yellows, ochres. I have some greens there that I'll use on the stems later. And I'm just doing that technique of pulling the leaves away from the bloom and cutting off some of the excess. But the leaves on this did dry a beautiful lime colour, so I'm definitely going to leave some of these leaves on for my display. Now I'm going to mix some colours together with the fabric paints, just like you would with regular acrylic paints. I think for the whole box of 12 colours, I think I paid just over a dollar each for all 12 colours. So this was a very economical way of buying fabric paint. And I love this big gesso brush. It came in a pack of three and I'm using it for a lot of other projects as well. It's really handy. And then my big round brush from Kmart. Great for getting into the small areas. And there it is. This is one of my favourites, I think. Love it. Now these next flowers, one stayed red and I'm pretty sure it's because of something the florist had used, some sort of um, chemical or something that's helped it maintain its colour. The other one is exactly the same flower but hasn't been treated so you can see the difference. Now for this method, these flowers are very fragile. They have a really soft and fluffy centre. So I'm just dabbing lightly with that smaller brush. You can see it's starting to come apart a little bit. So this one I'm taking extra care. It's a fragile bloom. So for this method, I'm going to use the sea sponge and I'm going to gently dab. And I'm using the fabric paints, but a sponge instead of the brushes for getting the final results. And I'm going to leave that red one because the florist has already added something to it, something to preserve it. Now method seven, I'm going to use some distress paint from Tim Holtz. And this paint is quite different to regular acrylic paints. It gives almost a chalky finish. So I'm tipping some into my little cheap palette and I'm going to mix up a nice sort of ochre colour using this Distress Paint. So this is a slightly different finish to the acrylics. It's a more subtle finish and I like it a lot. So how did I dry my flowers? Well, I used a very simple method of once they had finished blooming, I take them and I lay them out on a table on my veranda. So they're under cover and they just dry naturally. It's very easy. Here's a before and after. So I'm going to colour this one and mix up some orange colours using the Distress Paints. And it goes on nice and thick, which is lovely. This will be a two-tone flower with some pink in the centre and orange on the outer petals. So there's two varieties, a pink and an orange. Now I purchased this silk 
which is like a filler piece. It's a silk eucalyptus branch. And I thought this might be nice to bring some color back into my arrangement. I'm going to put that into the arrangement right at the end and just adds a little bit more life to the leaves that way. And I love this beautiful bluey green color. It's just gorgeous. I have some native roses here and I really decided I was just going to leave them as they were. I wanted to pull off the leaves because they looked very dead. But these little rose buds look lovely and they're a dark magenta colour. Now these flowers here have a lovely shape of almost a cone flower, but there are too many dead leaves on the bottom. So I'm just going to pull all the leaves away from the crown. And you can see that that lovely cone flower shape is revealed once all those dead leaves come off. And these are so dry, I can just strip them off with my fingers. And I don't think I'm going to colour these cone flowers. The colours are really nice anyway. It's sort of like a golden colour in the centre and then a soft yellow on the outside. So these will provide some lovely fill as well. I would like to give a shout out to my darling husband, who is the one who buys me these beautiful native flowers. He knows they're my favourites and uh, he comes home with a great big bunch of these every now and then. So thank you so much for my beautiful flowers. Now this next one I believe is called a ram's horn fern. I'm not entirely sure. Let me know in the comments if you know the true name of this, but that's what I call it anyway. And it's just so cute. So I'm mixing up a green, sort of an olive green, and I'm going to combine two techniques with this one. I'm going to use the brushing technique, and then I'm going to bring in my sea sponge and dab some of the color off because I want it to maintain a little bit of texture and be able to see some of the brown through the green. It's a very cute shape. <laughs> So that sea sponge means that I can end up with a two-tone piece with some brown and some olive showing through. Very cute. The flowers are still drying, but I have chosen to put them in a very large viridian green vase. And you can see the colours that are starting to show up there. I still think there's too much of those dry leaves in there. I'll probably take some of those out. But this is an in-progress shot of where we're at. And I haven't really arranged the flowers in the vase. I've just popped each stem in as I've finished it so that they can dry in the vase. I purchased some of this silk eucalyptus and it's a leaf that will play up the viridian color of the vase so that it's going to match the vase color a little bit more and bring a little bit of life back into the leaves 
and I've taken it outside in the sunshine to dry completely. And here's a close up of how it's drying. Looking very good and here it is finished on my dining room table. Thank you so much for watching. Bye for now.